What's up, guys? You're welcome to Emacom TV, where we publish news on politics and entertainment. We have another trending news for you today, and the headline here read: Governor Zulum to Army. If you can't secure Baga, we will mobilize hunters to do the job. All right, before I proceed with today's news, please, if this is the first time you are watching any of our videos on our channel, there is a red subscribe button below this video. Just go ahead, hit on that red subscribe button, click the bell icon to stay updated with all our latest news and updates. Here are the news in details. Babagana Zulum, Governor of Bornu, says if the military is unable to secure Baga, he will engage hunters to keep the town safe. On Wednesday, Boko Haram insurgent attacked his convoy in Baga while on his way to some internally displaced persons camped in Kukua, local government area of the state. After donating 12 patrol vehicles to security operatives in the area, Zolom also flagged off the reopening of the Monguno Baga Highway after two year closure. Zulum, who had earlier been briefed by the troops that Baga was free of Boko Haram insurgent, returned to ask what led to the attack on his convoy. We have over 1,181 soldiers in Baga, 72 officers, 107 soldiers, 400 soldiers in Mal 4, and 1,900 soldiers in Monguno. I see no reason why Boko Haram will stop to operate in Baga town, he said. The troops have been in Mal 4 for over one year. There is, in, there is a complete sabotage. The problem is not with, with, is not with President Buhari or General Buratai, but the command and control structure. There is need to look into the command and control structure. We have over 80,000 IDPs in Monguno. They cannot continue to depend on NGOs and others for food. We have created opportunity for them to go back to their communities and continue with their business and farming activities. After Salah, we will go back to Kukua. We will give them the military. We will give time to the military. But if they will not clear Baga, we will mobilize our hunters and vigilantes to recapture Baga. We can't continue like this. People have taken people have to take their destinies into their hand, Governor Zulum said. Reacting to the attack, Saga Musa, army spokesman said details of the incident are sketchy and efforts are ongoing to comb the scene of the attack. An investigation is also in progress to identify the circumstances that led to the attack, he said. Regrettably, this is an isolated and most unfortunate incident that occur in a territory where normalcy has since been restored with social economic activities picking up. The Nigerian army wants to reassure the general public that this will be interrogated with a view to forestalling future occurrence. Over the month, the governor had face off with the troop, had a face off with the troops in the states. In January, he accused a troop of extorting road users and the following month. Wow, this is a very serious development. Yesterday, Governor Zulum was attacked by Boko Haram insurgency when he was on his way to Baga. Now, if you want to look at what the governor just said, he has threatened the Nigerian army that if they cannot clear off Boko Haram from Baga, that he was going to mobilize vigilantes and hunter to do the job. And you know what? This, these guys have been very, these hunters have been very, very, very effective in fighting Boko Haram. They have been very effective. In fact, there is a, another force they call it JTF. JTF consists of hunters, some youth, and vigilante. They are the ones who did the bulk of the job in fighting insurgency in Bonu. So when the governor, when you hear the governor actually say that it's going to mobilize vigilantes and you know hunters to help to clear Baga, it's not the first time they've done it. I could remember even that during Jonathan's time, Jonathan's uh, uh, tenor, JTF were used to fight up Boko Haram and recover. In fact, it was then Boko Haram came, they were the ones that fend, you know, they fend off the Boko Haram attack. 
So they have been known to be very good, but the only thing is that they are not well equipped as an Nigerian soldier. So in other words, they have good morals. You understand me? Their morale is higher than that of the Nigerian soldier because they are the owners of this land. This is their land. So they are ready to fight for their father's land. Meanwhile, it is well, these soldiers, you see, they are brought from different parts of the countries. Most of them, the morale is not high. Most of them, they have this fear that, in fact, they are going to their death. You get that? They want to use them as sacrificial lamb. That is the way it has always been. You have seen, there are many cases of, of, of soldiers resigning. Like the recent one that just hit the military was 350 soldiers resigning, of which the House of Reps are investigating it. Now, the soldier actually came out, the military came out and uh, denied it, but it is it has been it has been confirmed that 350 soldiers want to resign citing lack of interest that they don't have lack of, they don't have interest again now if you want to look at the way they are being recruited a lot of these guys joined the army just because they were jobless not because they were ready to fight for their fatherland they joined because of joblessness and you know what they were not even well and properly examine they were not physically mentally examined people just throw in their own person people there and this is part of the problem with this country it is a know me i know you where somebody will put the person he knows and that is it they so some people even trade it so if you employ people for you know, some of these uh parastatal and these are military they trade it you pay their money and they give you the slots they give you the slot. That is the problem. So these guys, this military, you can even watch it in the video. I've done a video. If you go, just go and watch the video in my channel. There's a video I did about that full video of the Boko Haram attack on the governor. The governor. If you watch that video, you discover that. You look at the way, look at the coordinated response of those soldiers when the Boko Haram attacked. There was no formation. No formation at all of them. Just coward, you know. They come. I mean, it was such an embarrassing scene. You need to watch that video and you know that uh, we are just joking. Our military we need to be... We need another training again. Seriously, we need training. Look at Chad. Small Chad here. Look at Chad. Now, if you look at... There's a website that actually rank militaries in the world. If you go to globalfirepower.org globalfirepower.org you discovered nigeria is ranked number fifth in africa nigeria is fifth in africa and in the world i think nigeria is ranked around uh, 20 is it 20 something or so nigeria military is ranked 20 something in the world and in, then in africa we are ranked number fifth after south africa but look at what chad did to boko haram how they decimated boko haram after boko haram killed 90 two of their soldiers they decimated boko haram entered into the nigerian territory looked for boko haram killed 1000 of them we learned they killed 1000 of boko haram last year but why can't nigerian troops do the same feat why can't we achieve the same feat it, it becomes a very serious embarrassment that even after chad soldiers defeated boko haram they told nigerians to, to come and take over their those places that they've conquered for nigeria because boko haram was occupying those places they said they are not yet they are not occupiers they are, they are not yet to occupy it that the nigerian soldier it took nigeria more than two weeks more than two weeks for them to actually respond because it was such a shame it was a shame a situation whereby you die and even there is no, I mean, you are not given a proper burial by the military. Your wife, when living in the barracks, is thrown out of the barracks. And, you know, the gratuity that is supposed to be due to you is not even paid to your wife. That is the problem. Even while your wife awaits the gratuity, your family awaits the gratuity at the barracks, they will eject them out. They will eject them and somebody else will So, you see, there are a lot of things that make people not want to die for this country because you will never be remembered again that is a problem that is a big problem in itself so you can see here that the governor of 
Bono was attacked. There was no intelligence information, no early warning system to indicate that Boko Haram were on their way to attack, you know, Baga. No early warning system. What about all the money for the budget, the military? Can they buy drone? Some of these drones can hover in the air. Can hover in the air for up to even four hours or even five hours. I'm talking about sophisticated military drone. They can hover over in the air and monitor. What if they get something like, if they get 50 of those drones monitored by soldiers in, controls, in control centers? Well, once they do that, I mean, it will give early warning system once Boko Haram, and this most of these drones have what we call infrared sensors, that even at night it will detect movement and alert the soldiers of what is happening. Why can't we do such? Okay, you Nigeria have Sat one. We have satellite in orbit. Why can't we use satellite effectively to monitor? Why are we not using this thing? These are early warning systems. You get so that is it, guys. I want to drop your comment. Uh, let me know. So Zulum, the governor of Bonu State, have threatened to use hunters and you know and vigilante to recover their town back. So what do you think about this? Please drop your comment below. Let me know what you think about it. This is Emma Com TV. God bless you.